Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today we're going to be talking about how to build a washing table just like this. And this is one that actually collects water. So underneath I have some pond liner that rushes all the water down into a sump tank and then that's pumped out to all my shrubs and trees. I'll be showing you how to build that in a separate video. Today is all about the root washing table. So this is how I wash all of my radishes, carrots, beets, kale, chard. Anything that's on a baby salad green is washed here and I can be able to collect all that water. And then this is where I would wash my baby mixes. So I've got a video on each one of these pieces in the post harvest system. So I'll put links to all that in the video description or search my playlist, the post harvest station. Now I'm moving on to my wash table, and this one's going to be a little bit simpler to build. It's only going to be two feet wide by 91 inches long. It's just too wide back there to, to use the whole thing, so I'm going to cut it off at here. I'm using these two long 2x4s two as the main supports. I'll be ripping off these. I'm going to be cutting here, and the boards on here. I'm going to have to put in a couple more boards just to give it more support uh, for the totes when the totes are in there. So I picked to use this top side here. I had to pick one of the halves and this, these halves have the nicest part uh, top halves because I want the steel mesh to kind of lay flat on top of there. So that's why I picked that one. So I'm gonna need some more lateral support pieces. That works out perfect because this piece right here is exactly 24 inches on both sides. And then this is like an eight foot two by four. I can cut these up for my drawing table. All right, so this is all firewood, but I was able to salvage four two foot two by fours and an eight foot two by four. So I'll be able to cut these up and make my support pieces. So I need to add a piece in the middle of here and here so that when I put out the hardware cloth, it has plenty of support. So I'm just gonna take my two foot pieces that I just pulled off. So it worked out pretty nicely. I had a couple of the ones I thought other boards were 30 inches. So that worked out perfect. So here's two 30 inches. And I'm gonna make two more 30 inch legs from this other two by four I had left over from another project. So next I'll be putting in my legs and I'm going to be putting them underneath the main edge 2x4. That's really easy because I can push it against this board and up against this board and since these are at a 90 degree angle, my leg ends up at a 90 degree angle. Hey everybody, back in my garage today because it's really hot outside so I thought I'd do it in the shade. I'm going to be Adding in one more piece of wood right here on both sides. I'm just a little bit worried that over time hardware cloth will sag because of weight on top of it. So I've just got a 2x3 right here and I'm just going to cut these to length, put them on, and the next step will be to put on my quarter inch hardware cloth. So for this I just need some wire snips, 20 bucks, and some gloves definitely so I don't cut myself. This is three foot wide by 25 foot long at one quarter inch mesh. And this whole wash table design is just based off of um, Curtis Stone's design. And I'm just building it with the random wood that I have. So it's not exactly to his specification. It's the same exact design. And you can get his book and it tells you exactly uh, the dimensions and how he builds it. Or you can go look, watch on his YouTube videos. They're really awesome. I'm gonna use staples to hold it in place at first. And then I'm gonna come back with some one and a quarter inch screws with some washers. That's gonna sink the hardware cloth into the wood and really hold it tight and get it close. For now, I'm gonna use a hand staple gun and just lock it up. First, I'm gonna get my length because this thing it's just too much to deal with. So I want to get my length first. So I'm just making sure I can fold this under. It's a little bit long. That's that's okay. Just in case there's any mistakes, I can fix them. We'll go right there. 
The gloves are crucial here, otherwise I'd be ripping my hands apart. Now we got a nice straight cut. It's pretty easy just to follow the line. All right, so the next thing I need to do is make this thing easier to attach. So look, if I, pull, if I try to pin this down, this side comes up. If I try to pin this down, I can't pin this. I have to cut it in a certain way to relieve the pressure so that now I can fold it down. So I'm gonna cut it here and then flush with this two by four right here, and then I'll cut it down and around. And because of the way I cut the legs, the legs are on the inside, so I'm gonna have to cut my hardware cloth and my tarp to make it fit in there, but I can still do it. So now on this side, I can fold this down, and then on this side, I can fold this down. So I'm gonna do the same thing on each corner, and then I'm gonna fold it over try to get it tight and then throw a few staples in. But what's really gonna get it tight is when I put a bunch of bricks down on top of this to really stretch it out and get it flat. And then when I put my tarp under, I'm gonna seal it in with washers and screws. And I wanna make sure not to move this because it's right in the pattern where I want it. So that's absolutely going to make it work and make it easy. So I'm just going to try to get this as tight as I can. In case this mesh really matters, it's on the top. The sides, as long as they're not poking poking me, they're going to be fine. They're not going to be in the way of anything. So I keep it tied up, just rolling out the extra and then putting a staple on the top of it. And then at the bottom. Then I kind of go down it together, switching from side to side so I can keep this really tight. I'll wrap the palm liner up over the top, and then that'll make it tight. I went through and mocked this up a couple times just to make sure I had the length and it was gonna fit correctly. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be attaching this pond liner. That's what I'm using. This is some leftover pond liner that I used my large worm table over there. So it's leftover from that. And I have some just old leftover screws, and I'll be driving those through these washers to help pin the pond liner into the steel mesh hardware cloth. So I just laid out the pond liner. Um, I'm dragging it through the middle of my legs and it's very even. And then I'm just gonna fold the edge over about two inches over the top. And then I'm going to drive my screws in. I just wanna give a little tip for drilling. So this is a multi-function drill. It has screw mode, this is drill mode for drilling holes or pilot holes or using a hole saw. This is the hammer drill. This is for masonry. Okay, so I'm screwing in some screws. And then these numbers on the top here are for torque. If I put too much torque, it's going to really twist and bind up that pond liner. So I turned down the torque a little bit down to 13, and that seems to be pretty good. I could even turn down maybe to 11 and I get a little bit less twist. When you're driving the, the screw at the very end, it's gonna either put 16 or it can put 11 or 13 in at the end. When you put it down at 11, I can't make it any tighter. It doesn't have enough torque to drive this screw deeper into the wood. So this is just a preventative measure. And so that's just one way you can kinda utilize the torque function to get a better screwing action while you're building things. Okay, so I'm gonna mock this thing up and I'm just gonna get everything ready first. So I'm gonna lay out all my washers and screws. So I'm gonna put one in at every two by four. And I wanna find the link so that it's just like a gradual slope towards this way. And it'll just drain into a big tub. So I just wanna look at the angle here and try to get it nice. It's pretty gradual, but I kinda wanna lift this end up a little bit higher. So to do that, So once I hear the chuck, uh, the clutch kick in and click, that means it's as tight as this thing can make it. You know, I like 13. It'll drive it a little bit deeper. So I'm just gonna finish off the last couple screws here and just kind of tidy this corner up. And then I'm gonna leave this hanging like this. I'm gonna have to cut it a little bit, but I wanna get my tote first, my tub, where, and then figure out where it's gonna sit. I don't know if I'm gonna get a skinny one that's gonna fit underneath or one that'll be right out in front, probably right out in front. 
So in that case, I just want to wait so I can like cut it up correctly to fit in the tote that I choose. And then I'm just going to throw this in the final position behind the house and we'll be good to go. So here's the final product. The only thing I paid for this, the stainless steel hardware cloth. It's the only thing I paid for this and what did I pay? I paid 60 bucks for 25 feet of it and that's going to build my wash table and my dry table. All the wood was free. The screws are free. So I'll spend about like 40 to 50 bucks on a wash and dry table. How I connected the pond liner to my little tote here. Just a basic 50 gallon tote. So yeah, it's just a HDPE or it's an LDPE tote. Those are the two best types of plastics. And all I did was just cut a little hole in there, got my tarp to fit through. I pulled it through, even cut the tarp a little. And then I'm just using a couple clips to hold it in. And the water just drains right in, no problem. Just a super simple solution. And then here's the sump tank and my pump. And that pumps the water out to those banana trees right there. And then also all of these shrubs going down the whole back of the property here. My tutorial on how to set this up will be in my greens bubbler video. So stay tuned for that one.